You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. Well, bring on 2021. Uh, We're going to jump right into it. We're actually getting into earnings season, and we've been talking a lot about some FOMO trades uh, getting into the end of the year of 2020, that would have been. And uh, I guess we'll start off with a little bit of speculation here. Um, I received an email sent to theoptionsguy at invest.ally.com of someone actually looking for a name of the strategy. They gave some kudos to the options playbook, and I did appreciate this. But the strategy that they were looking at, they're wondering if it was named some type, and with putting air quotes around it, of Condor. And it is a four-legged trade. So in honor of that email... I am going to do that strategy today. Now, I don't recall exactly the name of the person, and nor would I necessarily share their full name over the air. But uh, if you are out there and you know who you are, this strategy and this session of Options Playbook Radio is going to be based off of your question. So here's what the strategy was. And I've seen it done many different ways, and it is a little bit. We talked a lot about leverage-covered calls in 2020, um, which my term inside the playbook is the fig leaf, and it's kind of taken off a little bit um, because it was a very popular strategy that deserved a name and didn't have one. So overall, um, I think it was kind of fitting because when you look at Buying an option as opposed to buying the stock and then selling a shorter term call against it, um, you don't own the stock. So you are kind of covered. So we came up with the name Fig Leaf, and that's where that one came from. And that's uh, highlighted inside the options playbook. Uh, I don't have a name for this strategy, but what the concept is, and I've seen it done in many different formats, is that you're going to sell a credit spread to try to pay a debit for some call options. So in this instance, we'll be selling a put credit spread to pay for a long call spread. Now, most of the time when the strategy is done, I see people sell credit spreads to pay for long option contracts, and that's totally fine. Um, That is probably the more common use of the strategy. The goal is to not pay or put an outlay of cash out for your out-of-the-money call option. So you sell a, a, a put credit spread and bring in an, an enough to cover the cost of the call option. So in this instance, we're going to do the same thing, but instead of 
buying a call option outright. We're actually going to buy a call spread. So then that got my mind thinking, well, what underlying stock might we want to do something like this on? And a stock recently that has came up in the news is DraftKings. Uh, they made the headlines and the stock made a decent run up recently. It's not at all time highs, but it's very near it. And it made that run up because in New York, they're talking about allowing sports betting in the state of New York. So people don't have to drive across the bridge with their Apple uh, apps to make sure that they're in Jersey City to be able to place a sports bet. So the thinking here is that this might take off overall. I have no opinion on that, but the stock has been volatile and been an interesting underlying to look at this week. So fittingly enough, I think I am going to use one of the, the listeners' questions out there, and I'm going to apply this strategy. So I guess we'll just call this a crazy condor. It's a four-legged trade, and it looks a little bit like an iron condor. Now we're going to be doing a put spread and a call spread, or maybe we just call it a crazy door. I, I don't know. Well, with that said, let's get into the strategy. DraftKings today closed at 54.63. It was up $1.24 on the day. Like I said, it has a lot of volatility in it, mainly because of the news, but also because of the industry that it's in. We are taping Options Playbook Radio. The market is closed. It is Wednesday, January 13th. We are going to go out into the January 29th expiration, which has 16 days remaining before those option contracts expire. All of the options that we are going to use in our crazy condor are going to have the same expiration. We are going to buy to open the 45 strike put, then sell to open the 50 strike put. Then on the call side, we are going to buy to open the 57 strike call and then sell to open the 61 strike call. We could get this done at the midpoint. Now, the market is a little bit wide because they are closed right now. But at the midpoint, we could get it done for even or basically zero cash outlay. The midpoint right now is trading right at 0 0.00. So if we do this entire trade, we do have risk in that we've sold a put credit spread. The put credit spread if you've noted, if you wrote down the strikes, is five points wide. That means we're going to have a five-point requirement to do that trade. On the call side, we are four points wide, which means the maximum upside on this is going to be that four points. We are going out 16 days. The expiration date is January 29th. If we look at the at the money straddle, which would be the 55 strike, long straddle would mean we're buying the 55 call and buying the 55 put. That is going to be trading for around $7. So with the stock at 54.63, the marketplace does think that it could get to the 61 strike call. It's within the expected move or the price of the long straddle. So if we do this trade, it's obviously a very bullish trade overall, the crazy condor is. And we are bullish then on DraftKings. And if you look at the chart on DraftKings, it's really at an inflection point. Uh, it's very close to its all-time highs, but it hasn't really broken through them and beyond. Uh, recently, it made a big dip down, but then the news came out and it made a, a nice run back up. So it's really in this inflection point. So if we do this trade overall, uh, our goal here would be to make at least a couple of dollars on our trade, knowing that the maximum that we could make is $4. I don't think you'd necessarily want to push it and hope for the whole $4. Maybe if it was, if I was doing this trade, I would put a trade in uh, to target a price around a net credit of $3 to the account approximately. So I would put all four legs in to close and then I'd want it for about a $3 net credit. And then I would set an alert. And if the underlying got down 
to my short put strike, which is the 50 strike, I would think about closing the trade. And then if it go if it went beyond down to the 45 level, I would definitely close the trade. So overall, that would be my outlook for this underlying. It's a very quick and dirty trade. It is definitely a speculative trade. The underlying right now, the um, the volatility for that expiration that we have chosen is uh, 71% for the most at-the-money call and put on average. The average is right around 71% implied volatility, saying that this is not a trade for the light of heart. If the stock stays within the long call and the short put, well, we just get out for nothing. So basically, we put the trade on for even. We have to pay commissions. That's a real cost. We always have to think about that. But if it stays within that seven-point range, well, there's really no benefit if we ride it all the way to that expiration date. If it's on its way up, we need it to really just get above 57. If it gets anywhere above 57 and closes there at the expiration on January 29th, would be profitable on this trade. Ideally, we'd like it to get up to the 61 level, uh, looking to close it out if we can get the maximum uh, or close to the maximum of the width of the long call spread. So it's an interesting trade. Somebody did send me an email asking me what the name of the trade was. I do not have a name. I guess we came up with Crazy Condor today. But uh, I think it's a, a definitely an interesting way to approach a fairly volatile stock that you would like to get long on. But the option contracts are real expensive. So you realize here, though, that you do have more downside than upside in that the width of the short put spread is five points and the width of the long call spread is four points. So you might ask, well, Brian, why are you doing that? Why won't you make the width of the long call spread five points? And the answer is, I don't want to pay anything for the trade. Usually anybody that is doing something like this really doesn't want to have a net cash outlay, pay a net debit for that trade. Now, you will have a margin requirement. You will have to have that in your account. That margin requirement will be five dollars for every one by one by one crazy condor that you put on but overall we're doing it for an even and that's where i would enter it right now with the markets closed and um that even means that we're not we have no cash outlay to get into the trade if that trade is actually executed so there was a lot there, a lot to unpack so let's go back and do a review of the trade now remember all of these option contracts have a January 29th expiration. We are 100% speculating on DraftKings, symbol DKNG. This is not meant to be a recommendation, as usual, on Options Playbook Radio. This is a strategy that's not even covered inside Options Playbook Radio, but I've seen other people do different versions of it. The more popular version of it would be to actually sell a put spread to just buy a long call out of the money outright. In other words, you're just flat out buying a lottery ticket and you're selling a spread to try to pay for it. Very similar, but we're going to lower the cost a little bit by doing the long spread. And here is the trade. Okay. DraftKings closed at 54.63, up a dollar 23. The date today is Wednesday, January 13th. The markets are closed. We are going to be buying to open one of the January 29th expiration 45 strike puts, selling to open of the same expiration 50 strike puts, buying to open the same expiration 57 strike call and selling to open that expiration 61 strike call. We're going to enter this as a net even trade into your account. That means that uh, you will have a small debit. You will have to pay commissions. We're going to do this on a one-by-one-by-one one by one basis just because it's all going to be on paper. We're just trying to learn here on Options Playbook Radio. And our goal here would be that the underlying stock would shoot up to 61 or beyond. We realize that if it does go down, we do have the risk of the short put spread. And our maximum, the most that we can lose on this underlying stock is if the stock closes below the 45 strike put that we are long. Well, that's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. 
If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, much like the one that we received today that gave me this idea, please email them to theoptionsguy at invest.li.com. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>